So focus is the sort of prerequisite for basically, uh, you say knowledge work, but basically any kind of skill acquisition, any kind of major effort in this world. Can we break that apart a little bit? Yeah. So, so a key, a key aspect of focus is not just that you're, you're concentrating hard on something, but you do it without distraction. So a, a big theme of my work is that context shifting kills the human capacity to think. So if, if I, if I change what I'm paying attention to, to something different, really, even if it's brief and then try to bring it back to the main thing I'm doing, that causes a huge cognitive pileup that makes it very hard to think clearly. So even if you think, okay, look, I'm writing this code or I'm writing this essay and I'm not multitasking and, and all my windows are closed and I have no notifications on, but every five or six minutes you quickly check like an mm -hmm. inbox or your phone that initiates a contact shift in your brain, right? We're going to start to suppress some neural networks. We're going to try to amplify some others. It's a, it's a pretty complicated process, actually. There's a sort of neurological cascade that happens. You rip yourself away from that halfway through and go back to what you're doing. And now it's trying to switch back to the original thing, even though it's also in your brain's in the process of switching to these emails and trying to understand those contexts. Uh, and as a result, your ability to think clearly just goes really down. So and it's fatiguing too. I mean, you do this long enough, and you're, you get midday and you're like, okay, I can't. I can't think anymore. Mm -hmm. You've exhausted yourself. Is there some kind of um, perfect number of minutes, would you say? So are we talking about focusing on a particular task for you know, one minute, five minutes, 10 minutes, 30 minutes? Is it possible to kind of context switch while maintaining deep focus you know, every 20 minutes or so? So if you're thinking of like this, again, maybe it's a selfish kind of perspective, but if you think about programming, you know, you're focused on a particular design of a little bit, maybe small scale on a particular function or large scale on, on, a, on, a, on a system. And then the shift of focus happens like this, which is like, wait a minute, is there a library that can achieve this little task or something like that? And then you have to look it up. This is the danger zone. Yep. You go to the internets. Yeah. And, and so you have to, now you, it is a kind of context switch because as opposed to thinking about the particular problem, you now have switched thinking about like uh, consuming and integrating knowledge that's out there that can plug into your solution to a particular problem. It definitely feels like a context switch, but is that is that a really bad thing to do? So should you be setting it aside always and really trying to as much as possible go deep and stay there for like a really long period of time? Well, I mean, I think if you're looking up a library that's relevant to what you're doing, that's probably okay. And I don't know that I would count that as a full context shift because the semantic networks involved are relatively similar, right? You're, you're thinking about this type of solution. You're thinking about coding. You're thinking about this type of functions. Where you're really going to get hit is if you switch your context to something that's different and if there's unresolved obligation. So really the worst possible thing you could do would be to look at like an email inbox, mm -hmm. right? Because here's 20 emails. I can't answer most of these right now. They're completely different. Like the context of these emails, like, okay, there's a grant funding issue or something like this is very different than the coding I'm doing. And I'm leaving it unresolved. <laughs> so it's like someone needs something from me and I'm going to try to pull my attention back. The second worst would be something that's emotionally arousing. So if you're like, let me just glance over at Twitter. I'm sure it's nice and calm and peaceful over there, right? That could be devastating because you're going to expose yourself to something that's emotionally arousing. That's going to completely mess up the cognitive plateau there. And then when you come back to, okay, let me try to code again. It's really difficult. So it's both the information and the emotion. Yeah, both both can be killers if what you're trying to do. So I would recommend at least an hour at a time because it could take up to 20 minutes to completely clear out the residue from whatever it was you were thinking about before. So if you're coding for 30 minutes, you might only be getting 10 or 15 minutes of actual sort of peak lex going on there, right? So an hour, at least you get a good 40, 45 minutes plus. I'm, I'm partial to 90 minutes as a really good, a really good chunk. We can get a lot done. But just before you get exhausted, you can sort of pull back a little bit. Yeah, and uh, one of the beautiful, and you know, people can read about it in your uh, book, Deep Work, but, and I know this has been out for a long time and people are probably familiar with many of the concepts, but it's still pretty profound and it has stayed with me for a long time. Uh, there's something about adding the terms to it yeah. that actually solidifies the concepts, like words matter, it's yeah. pretty cool. And uh, just for me, sort of as a comment, there's, uh, it's a struggle and it's very difficult to uh, maintain focus for a prolonged period of time. But 
the days on which I'm able to accomplish several hours of that kind of work, I'm happy. So forget being productive and all that. Yeah. I'm just satisfied with my life. I'm, I feel, I feel fulfilled. It's like joyful. And then I, I can be, I'm less of a dick to other people in my life afterwards. <laughs> it's a, it's a beautiful thing. And there, there, I, I find the opposite when I don't do that kind of thing, I'm much more irritable. Like, I feel like I didn't accomplish anything. And there's this stress that then the negative emotion builds up to where you're no longer able to sort of uh, enjoy the hell out of this amazing life. So, so in that sense, deep work has been a source of a lot of uh, uh, happiness.